Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back with part four of What If Deku had a foresight quirk. I'm glad y'all are enjoying the series. I'm enjoying making it. This is definitely the most fun I've had on a series in a while. But um, I'm not going to waste that much more of your time. I don't want to sit here and ramble on. So I'm not going to waste that much more of your time. And we're going to get right into the what if. Let's get it. The last we left off, Azuka Midori and Shoto Todoroki were at Hosu City. They got a bit of an alert. An alert from the one and only Tenya Ida. And luckily, they got there just on time. Because just as they get, they got there, the sword of the hero killer stain was about to plunge straight into the back of Tenya Ida. Luckily, Shoto Todoroki is able to blast the hero killer with fire, getting him off of Tenya. Azuku walks over and grabs Tenya and drags him away and puts him off to the side. Immediately though, Azuku steps forward and reaches for his blade, but realizes that he no longer has it. He hasn't been training with his blade, his actual sword, because, well, he doesn't want to necessarily kill anybody, especially doesn't want to kill Todoroki. So he decided to stay away from using that said blade. And that's a big unfortunate happening because he's standing in front of somebody that has, well, a lot of blades. Still though, Azuku shakes his head and just doesn't really mind the fact that he doesn't have his blade. He looks toward the hero killer by the name of Stain and he whispers back toward Todoroki, telling him something relatively simple but relatively odd at the same time. You take the long range, okay? Be unpredictable. Shoot when, shoot when you shouldn't shoot. Shoot when you should shoot. Just be unpredictable, okay? Todoroki questions why. Why Why would he be unpredictable? I mean, he'll, he'll hit Azuku. But Azuku says that his unpredictability is predictable for him. Azuku smiles and waves him off, saying just to be ready for the craziest fight of his life. Azuku walks toward the hero killer as the hero killer mocks him, saying that he's too cocky, that he's no true hero, and that he has no chance in this. Azuku shakes his head and says that he really, really shouldn't underestimate him. Just as he says this, the hero killer comes charging in. The hero killer, though, would immediately just throw wind. Hit wind. That's all he would do. Dodge after dodge, Azuku would be un it would be unable to hit Azuku and the hero killer would begin struggling on top of that the hero killer would not not notice the fire that's about to hit him in the face as Azuku dodges out of the way casually and the fire hits the hero killer directly on the chest the hero killer doesn't know what's happening Azuku isn't crazy fast but it feels as if he knows every he knows everything as if he's 10 steps ahead and which Azuku kind of laughs about this and he pulls something out from his back out of some sort of a holster and it's a sword wait he just said he didn't have a sword azuku laughs a little bit more as the hero killer reaches back to his right pocket to feel that his sword is gone he just got pickpocketed by this kid by this wannabe hero azuku waves his hand toward toward stain basically greeting him in for another round as that happens azuku can outpace him it's wild but it's frankly because Azuku knows exactly what's going to happen before it even happens the hero killer has never fought someone like this even his battle instincts alone can't help him keep up yes it's keeping him well with not it's basically keeping him available to not get stabbed but other than that it's not helping him otherwise Azuku would eventually get the upper hand and eventually would grab the back of the hero killer as fire and ice slam into him and as Azuku hits the hilt on the back of his neck. He collapses toward the ground and Azuku grabs chains and wraps it around his, his ankles, his hands, and every piece that he possibly could. Once again though, Azuku tells Todoroki to walk over here and freeze part of his body. Azu Azuku makes it clear that the, the hero killer could be playing possum, so that's exactly what they do on top of the chains. 
Azuku grabs him, grabs the hero killer by the arms and drags him off. He tells Todoroki to grab Tenya and basically to help him out to make sure he's good. As they do this though, Endeavor finally arrives with many others and he, th and he throws the hero killer toward Endeavor and Azuku laughs, laughs and basically says that it was real impressive how Endeavor defeated the hero killer. That firepower is one hell of a thing. Azuku just walks off as he begins to head off, basically back toward the car that they basically showed up in. Endeavor is shocked to see this as if Azuku already knew that this would be the outcome and already knew that this is what needed to be done in terms of, well, giving credit to Endeavor. Todoroki being fine with this as long as they don't get in trouble and that same deal is made so that they don't get in trouble. Endeavor wants to kind of compliment both of them but he's still in that awkward phase where he can't really do so but he just says that they did okay he guesses. Azuku shrugs it off and says that that's the best they're going to get but still they got work to do. Azuku and Todoroki go back into the training the training chamber basically just this open area that's basically a mini stadium and they begin training once again but of course they would get called back relatively soon. Time for them to head back to UA because of this crazy incident and Tenya Ida obviously being kind of hospitalized. That's definitely not the best thing for the image of, well, UA. But still, they all head back. They all head back to, the or to UA once again and Aizawa explains everything that's going to take place. That they're going to have a final exam. That this final exam is going to consist of two different two different tests. That being the written and then also the practical. They all talk about oh how, how they need help studying so on and so forth. But Azuku, well I mean being that he's extremely intelligent. This would be very easy. I mean the test would be very easy. And there's no really chance of him failing or basically not passing. At least the written exam. He doesn't know how he'll fare in the in the practical but he feels that he'll fare pretty well so he does help a couple people study but being him himself he gets a little frustrated with some of them because they're kind of slow but still he does his best and carries on with what he needs to do and eventually it leads them to passing the written exam or at least some of them passing the written exam and then on to the practical the practical exam is where Azuku will definitely be able to show what he's made of. Not only that, he'll have to show a little bit of teamwork. Some teamwork that he hasn't quite shown just yet. I mean, he showed it with Todoroki, but no one's really supposed to know about that. So, yeah, no comment on that regard. With that said, though, they all meet at the gym. The gym where all the teachers are currently waiting. Many of them thought that they were going to be fighting robots. But that's not the case. The furthest from it, actually. They're going to be fighting the teachers. The teachers of UA who are pro heroes. Now, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Azuko sees this as a great way to truly train and test his abilities, but he wonders what teacher he'll be going against. He waits as Aizawa begins to talk, and after he's done, they actually don't bring up Azuku or Bakugo. Azuku now assumes that they'll be fighting together as a duo, but just before he explains who they will be going against, well, Aizawa walks over to Azuku and throws something on his shoulder as it wraps around his neck. It's a scarf, another version of Aizawa's scarf. After Aizawa learned how, or saw, frankly, how good he used it before, he thought he would get another one for him made from, obviously, the support heroes. On top of that, giving him a, a purely metal bow staff that he can he can use. And of course, Azuku knows how to use this. He knows how to use most weaponry. Uh, Aizawa explains that this will help him basically in the line of hero work and allow him to actually use a weapon instead of, you know, not being able to use a sword because, you know, you'll kill people. Of course, Azuku is happy to see this, but there has to be a catch. Aizawa says not necessarily, but... If you want to call it that, the catch is that they will be fighting one of the hardest, if not the hardest, person to fight out of all the teachers. Azuku is basically taken back by this, and he shakes his head. It's All Might, isn't it? Just as he says this, All Might comes crashing down to the ground with a loud, I am here. And of course, 
it's going to be Bakugo and Azuku Midoriya versus the symbol of peace, All Might. Azuku is excited, but at the same time, nervous in a way. He knows how strong Bakugo is, but All Might's still in his more powerful condition. Of course, not super, super powerful. He's not prime All Might by any means, but he is stronger than Bakugo, at least at this moment. So using them as a comparison or a stick, a stick comparison to see where they are in terms of distance, it's kind of hard to tell. But with that said, it doesn't necessarily matter. Bakugo and Azuku begin to formulate a small plan. With the respect that was given before, Bakugo knows that a plan will be needed. Azuku says that it's really nothing crazy. They're just going to have to predict what All Might's going to do for the first parts. They could always escape, but he assumes that Bakugo doesn't want to do that. So they're going to have to expose weaknesses that, that All Might has, in which Bakugo questions what kind of weaknesses are those. Azuku says that, ba that Bakugo and All Might are brawlers. They're not very technical, so we can ex they can expose that. There are certain crucial points on one's body that will get exposed when overextending and being a brawler. Azuku explains that there are certain weak points that they can strike on All Might, being that toward the rib cage and being that toward certain parts of his neck and also his legs, that if they properly coordinate their attacks, especially with basically all the with the weaponry that was given to him with this metal bow staff and also Aizawa's or a version of Aizawa's scarf, he should be able to get some openings to take advantage of. Bakugo nods his head as they await their turn to go. And when it's finally their turn to face down All Might, they get ready as the gates swing open. They go forward toward All Might and they begin their assault. Bakugo charging in first as as Azuku is very, very close behind, closing the distance toward, toward All Might as quick as possible, even though he's shooting insane pressurized wind toward them. Nonetheless, they get that distance closed and they're right next to All Might. Bakugo immediately tries to attack at the eyes and also different parts of the ribcage of All Might to try to expose something. Azuku attacks the one part of the ribcage that he knows is slightly injured, smacking it with his bow staff, his metal bow staff that feels as light as paper. On top of that, striking part of his leg on the inside of the thigh, and on top of that, striking toward the where the knee and also the, the other part of the leg or the shin bone meets, he begins to try and immobilize All Might. This is difficult, very difficult. All Might is extremely durable. This is no easy task, but they continue tr trying to expose these weaknesses as Bakugo tries to keep All Might blind, trying to basically keep All Might from seeing them in terms of basically reaction time and slowing down the, the rate that All Might will be able to counter. And in doing this, it's giving them so many openings. Bakugo lands, lands blasts, powered up by one for all to the stomach of All Might and so on and so forth. Azuku continues to whack and basically hit All Might so hard that it seems that his his hits with his bow staff are getting strengthened by an outside source. And as he swings that, that bow staff toward All Might's face, this glow begins to emerge around it. Azuku can feel it. It's this odd glow, this mystical purplish blue, a, a mix of all of these colors all surrounding the bow staff as if He's empowering this bow staff with, with a power that he had no idea he could truly control. And as he does, he lands a blow to All Might's face that shatters his jaw. He's shocked to see this, but he can feel the power. He can feel something. His quirk finally evolving and finally knowing how to use it. Azuku continues battering All Might as All Might or as as Bakugo follows up as well, eventually leading to All Might surrendering. Yes, All Might could have gone longer. He could have survived longer and maybe even pulled it out at the end. But the plan and the, the, the coordination of Bakugo and Izuku were so perfect that he felt that it was time to surrender and give the boys their flowers. They won. They truly did win. Izuku and Bakugo have now passed. And they're told that the forest training camp, well, for one, everyone was going to anyways, but they won't have to do extra work on top of that. 
Of course, they're happy to hear this. They're not. They didn't want to do that. And frankly, the the matchup against All Might that just wasn't necessarily fair. Everyone else went up against someone way weaker than All Might. But still, if they came out with a technical win, they'll take it. They'll take it nonetheless. The next day, they would they would be headed over to the Forest Training Camp. The Forest Training Camp is is where they're going to be getting the most out of their courts most out of their training and the most out of everything they possibly could so when they arrive at a giant hill to meet the wild rod pussycats well let's just say the training would begin now and then the wild wild pussycats would basically create change the mountain into a giant wave knocking them all off but azuku being himself he was able to easily dodge it standing on top of the on top of the bus but of course Aizawa tells him to get down there and help his classmates. Azuku does just that, and he helps out the best, to the best of his ability, and with a combination of a stronger Bakugo and Azuku that can basically foresee everything that's coming, or at least to an extent, they get through the forest easily. Easily. Not by, not by sundown, of course, but relatively easily. And Azuku can feel that this training is, already has benefited all of them successfully. Luckily, though, they're not going to have to worry too much about training for the rest of the night. They're able to get some they get some food. They're able to get some rest, shower up, whatever, all that, and then hit the, hit the bed. When they wake up the next morning is when they truly, truly begin their training. Aizawa has a special little thing in mind for Izuku, and that is actually overwhelming his senses to the point that he can read multiple things at once of course he's already been able to do this to an extent but that's going to be a lot a lot harder when he actually has five to six people attacking him so that's exactly what they do they have some extra extra basically teachers or wild from the wild wild bussy cats aizawa himself and a couple students that just need to use their quirk in terms of output including both, both Todoroki and some other people as well, but they continue just to basically send an onslaught toward Azuku, trying to overwhelm his senses so that hopefully they can break through that wall so that Azuku can truly see multiple things happening at one time. When he fought Stain, of course, not many know about that, but when he fought Stain, he was able to coordinate with Todoroki to the point that he could dodge Todoroki's blast, but also dodge the attack Stain was shooting toward him. But that's only two people. What happens when you add three more people? Four more people? These are things that Azuka needs to work on, and this is what he will work on throughout this entire time. And there's going to be massive benefits. They see extremely extremely massive benefit or he does show sees extremely massive benefits from this alone he sees insane growth in terms of his foresight insane growth in terms of his bifrost like ability that allows him to engulf power within his well his weaponry and on top of that just his movement and also his his technique becomes even more flawless something that they really wanted to work on for him and there's just benefits for everyone around him on top of that. Everyone's getting stronger. And throughout the next couple of days, everyone gets far, far more powerful. The only problem is Bakugo. And it's not because he's not getting more powerful, because he is. But his powers seem to truly be messing with his body. And Azuku is worried about something. He knows that he has All Might's power. He knows that he's the successor of All Might. What, what happens when one for all is within somebody that already has a quirk? What happens when one for all is within somebody that's quirk is powerful on its own? Is it going to strain their body tenfold faster than they possibly could believe? He's not so sure. He's not. But he's worried. It definitely worries Azuku because there is really no way around it. It seems like Bakugo is heading quicker to the grave than, than anybody else around them. Power always comes at a cost, and there's always that cost. Azuku keeps this to himself for now 
but he decides he's going to bring this up to All Might when he gets the chance. But that chance to tell All Might would, would come a lot slower, you could say, or a lot more in the future than you could possibly imagine. Because one night, Azuku is out training on his own and he hears a rustle in the grass. And let's just say he's an instantly attacked, attacked by a ton of people. A ton. The League of Villains have arrived for Izuku himself. And well, the training alone allows him to in incapacitate multiple of them. But it doesn't matter. He gets burned relatively badly and he gets thrown into a, this marble-like thing. And they're ta he's taken away. Taken away without a notice. And the next morning, Aizawa is questioning where Izuku is. And they all in the in the forest training camp have a bad feeling because Izuku has just been captured and is currently with the League of Villains. And something tells Aizawa that whatever happened to him and wherever he went, it was not only by force, but they want him for a whole different reason. They want his quirk. They don't want his allegiance. They want his power. What's going to happen to Azuku? Are they going to take control over his mind? Are they going to make him into a weapon? A slave? What are they going to do? Well, you'll have to find out. Find out in part 5 of What If Deku Had a Foresight Quirk. And if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to leave a sub. And make sure to leave a comment down below. All that good stuff. And I hope y'all have an amazing day. Later.